Boyfriend Beauties Prince Harry visited girlfriend Meghan Markle on set of legal drama suits to watch her filming the head of Invito's games where they attended their first official engagement and he hands out medals. Prince Harry secretly visited the set of suits, his girlfriend Meghan Markle's television show, on Wednesday when he quietly flew into Toronto a few days early. He apparently met the cast and crew of the U.S. legal drama and proudly watched Meghan in action. Everyone was so excited, the source told told hello. Canada. He was super low-key, met some crew and was so happy to watch his lady. Kensington Palace declined to comment. News of the visit emerged as the prince braved 40-degree humidity to greet hundreds of competitors at the start of the Invitos Games today. Although hopes were high that he would be accompanied by Miss Markle, the royal arrived at the York Lions Stadium just outside of the city alone. The previous evening he and and Miss Markle, 36, had appeared at the same official event, the opening ceremony for the Games, although they were careful not to be photographed together. In her absence, Harry, fifth in line to the throne, and dressed in jeans and his black and Vito's polo shirt, watched one door to races on the track, handed out several medals and then made a point of meeting as many servicemen and women as possible in their preparation area. The Invito's Games are an inspirational Paralympic-style event for injured service personnel, created by the Prince. Some 550 competitors from 17 nations are taking part in 12 adaptive sports such as tennis, golf and basketball. Today Harry learned about the Canadian art of dog sledging as he attended a Duke of Edinburgh Gold Awards ceremony. He was handing out awards for the first time and met with former awards winners, as well as 150 young people who have just achieved the highest level of the scheme founded by his grandfather in 1956. Chatting with two existing gold winners who now help out with the scheme nationally, Harry was fascinated to learn how they had gone out into the wilderness dog sledging as part of their challenges. Augusta White, 16, from Toronto told the prince that she had been terrified of dogs before she did it. And now? He asked. I have a gorgeous little cockapoo. She replied. He also teased Jessica Silva, 26, who had borrowed a gold badge as she didn't have hers with her. I saw what you did, Harry laughed. He also chatted with Valerie Pitcher, whose artist father, Bernard Poulin, has painted two pictures that hang at Buckingham Palace and St. James's Palace. The second was of his brother, Prince William, three and a half, which was completed from photographs. Harry said, this sounds like something my father would say but it's very difficult to keep a little person of that size stop enough to sit. Afterwards he listened with a smile as Lou Givarelli, the national president of the awards scheme, talk about his his grandfather who is meant to have retired from public beauty at the age of 96 was still accompanying the queen on engagements and that his life was one of dedication, to which we could all aspire. After handing out awards to the winners, Harry chatted with one group of youngsters and asked them about what they had done to achieve them. Dog sledging, I'm hearing about a lot of dog sledging, he said. If you need to do it then this is the place but you need to respect it. You need to go off and spread the love. He also went on a behind-the-scenes tour of the athletic stadium and it was more than just the competitors who caught his eye. He was mainly talking to Knoxville my puppy, said Stetson Leroy, whose service dog received a princely pat today. He got to play with him for a little bit. He was saying he was a good boy, and beautiful looking the former army sergeant, 26 who lost both of his legs in Afghanistan in 2012 says Harry was encouraging us all. Christy Wise, 30, co-captain of the U.S. team, revealed that she enjoyed some light-hearted banter with the prince as he toured the facility. I was carrying my leg and he was are you carrying your own leg or someone else's? I was like my own leg this time. He just hangs out with us. He's all about this. He knows the athletes and is not here to take the picture and leave. The serving pilot from Reno, Nevada, severed her right leg when she was hit by a motorboat while paddle boarding in Florida. It had seemed plausible that Miss Markle might be on hand for the event today, after the actress turned up for the games be at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto the night before. Although the couple was not seated together, she was sat just a few feet away from the Queen's grandson, who was accompanied by U.S. First Lady Melania Trump. Wearing a purple dress and a matching $690 Mackage leather jacket slung over her shoulders, Meghan was escorted by her close friend Marcus Sanderson, 
who introduced her to Prince Harry last year. Her low-key presence marks the first time she has joined the royal for an official event and will intensify speculation that an engagement announcement is imminent. Harry, seated a quarter of a stadium away, occupied a VIP box alongside Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, U.S. First Lady Melania Trump and Ukraine's President Poroshenko. Because they are not engaged, royal protocol dictates that Harry and Meghan cannot sit next to one another at official events. The distance, 18 seats and four rows, did nothing to dampen the actress's excitement or pride. She beamed as Harry gave an inspiring and humble speech on stage during which he told the 550 athletes gathered, You are all winners. You are in vitos. Meanwhile Harry seemed unable to keep his eyes off his radiant girlfriend and was spotted glancing down towards her seat on a number of occasions. Before she took her seat, the First Lady met with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, his glamorous wife Sophie and his children Ella Grace and Xavier. Mrs. Trump spoke to Sophie first, saying, It's good to see you. I saw you a few days ago. She then chatted briefly to Trudeau about the couple's children before telling him that her son Barrett had spent the day playing soccer. Miss Markle, although American-born, currently resides in Toronto while filming suits. She has been dating the prince since July last year when they were introduced by her best friend Marcus, a consultant for the Soho House Group and former global membership director at the exclusive club where he worked his way up from being a waiter to the right-hand man of founder Nick Jones. Prince Harry 32, was introduced to his girlfriend at Soho House in London and is believed to have attended a masked Halloween ball at Soho House in Toronto while secretly visiting Meghan at her home last year. Meghan could be seen clapping enthusiastically when the UK team entered the auditorium, although Harry got to his feet. Intriguingly, particularly as she is not entitled to British taxpayer-funded police protection, one of Harry's Scotland Yard security officers could be seen hidden away in the stairwell close to where Miss Markle was seated. Presumably he had been stationed there to whisk her away as soon as the opening show had ended. The actress appeared to be aware of the cameras, sitting with enormous poise in her seat, often whispering and giggling with Mr. Anderson. But her boyfriend had her undivided attention when he took the stage. She was seen laughing as he cracked a joke with Captain Trevor Green a retired soldier who was terribly injured in Afghanistan in 2006. Meghan smiled broadly and clapped enthusiastically as her boyfriend was shown live on a screen in the auditorium and thanked for creating the inspiring and those games concept. Following the Captain Green onto the stage, Harry began his speech by recapping the story of his flight home from Afghanistan in 2008 when he was joined on the plane by three injured British soldiers and the body of a Dane killed in action. He went on to decry the cynical, apathetic world, telling the audience at the Air Canada Centre, we can all win when we respect our friends, neighbours and communities. Talking about host city Toronto, he said, more sports, more nations, more friends and families, more fans watching than ever before. We have the biggest crowd that Invitos has ever had. Watched by Markle, who looked on intently throughout, Harry ended the speech with a call to action, telling the assembled athletes, you are all winners. You are in vitos. Let's get started. From their vantage point, Harry and Melania had a perfect view of the stage, which was festooned with black and yellow in vitos logos, at the Air Canada Canada Centre. The show itself kicked off late at approximately at 8 p.m. BST with a fanfare and welcome before the Parade of Nations, featuring all 550 athletes, commenced, along with members of the Canadian military. Other performers at the musical extravaganza include singers Sarah McLaughlin and Alessia Cara and folk band La Butine Saurient The Smiling Boot. The Invitos Games was started in 2014 by Prince Harry and was inspired by the Us Warrior Games. Competitors are drawn from 17 countries, including the UK, US, Canada and Australia, with the US alone sending 90 athletes. All are former or serving members of the military many of whom suffered life-changing injuries during combat. Other countries taking part in this year's event include France, Germany, Estonia, Afghanistan, Iraq and Italy. Servicemen and women from Ukraine, the Netherlands, Denmark and New Zealand will also compete. The Toronto Games will last a week, starting with Saturday evening's celebrity-studded opening ceremony and will end with a concert featuring Bruce Springsteen and Brighton Adams. Last year's event was held in Orlando. Florida, 
and along with Prince Harry, then Vice President Joe Biden and his wife Jill attended. The first games, held in London, saw senior members of the royal family descend on the games, among them the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Next year's event will be held in Sydney, Australia. The name of the games is drawn from a Victorian poem by William Ernest Henley, written in 1875. Titled in Vitos, the final two lines have become the game's motto and read, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Henley was himself an amputee and the poem reflects his own battle with illness and adversity. In his case, amputation followed a bad bout of tuberculosis at the age of 12 and for the rest of his life. The red-bearded poet was forced to use a crutch. Despite his injuries and repeat visits to hospital after his other foot became diseased, the journalist and author married and had one daughter, Margaret. He eventually succumbed to tuberculosis at the age of 53 at his home in Woking in 1903 and was buried in Bedfordshire. Prior to the inaugural Games in London 2014, the poem was read in a promotional video by actors Daniel Craig and Tom Hardy. Sporting events, conducted in the style of a Paralympic-type competition, include swimming, archery, wheelchair basketball and athletics. Golf is a new addition to this year's lineup and rowing. Sitting volleyball and wheelchair rugby events will also be held. The mascot at the 2017 event is a cartoon Labrador retriever dog named Vimy. Vimy refers to Vimmerich, an engagement during the World War I Battle of Arras in 1917 which saw the Canadian Corps order to storm the German position. Previous French attacks had failed, with the loss of 100,000 lives, but the men of the Canadian Corps prevailed, losing 10,000 in the process. Earlier on Sunday, Prince Harry became the first member of the royal family to meet a member of the Trump family since last year's presidential election. Mrs. Trump and Harry spent less than 30 minutes together before the royal left for another engagement, the Jaguar Land Rover Driving Challenge. Despite its brevity, the meeting appeared cordial with the pair warmly shaking hands before settling down to talk in a room at the Sheraton Hotel. The 33-year-old prince dressed in the dark blue suit while the 47-year-old first lady wore a tailored black and white dog tooth tee or suit and black heels. Harry initially appeared awkward when he was introduced to the Slovenian former model, smiling brightly for the cameras before letting it drop as he turned away. The pair then engaged in small talk with Mrs. Trump thanking the prince for coming before he asked her if she had been in Canada long. Later, 33-year-old Harry gushed over the Canadian city during a brief meeting with outgoing Governor General David Johnston. Toronto has won a special place in the Prince's heart since he began dating Suits actress Meghan Markle who keeps a home there. Harry, who has spent quiet weekends there with his girlfriend and her dogs, told Governor General Johnston it had become a home away from home for him. It's always fantastic to be here, he said. Asked by the Governor General about the Invitos games Harry said, they have just grown and grown. I'd like them to go on for 50 years if I could. Mr. Johnston is standing down at the end of the month after seven years in the job to be replaced by businesswoman and former astronaut Julie Payette, who last week met the Queen at Balmoral. During their formal meeting earlier in the day, Harry and the U.S. First Lady then settled down to discuss the Invitos game's success. Subsequently Mrs. Trump moved on to meet some of the veterans taking part for Team USA in the Games while Harry moved on to a meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Mrs. Trump is leading the U.S. delegation at the international sporting event in her first solo foreign trip and the first known meeting of a member of the royal family with a member of the Trump family since the election. It's not the Trump's first encounter with royalty, however. In November 2005, the President and First Lady, then just the newly wed couple, met Harry's father, Prince Charles, during a reception at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Mrs. Trump's decision to lead the American delegation, whose members include Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin, professional golfer Nancy Lopez and entertainer Dwayne Newton, reflects the First Lady's utmost respect for the hard work, courage and sacrifice of the U.S. military, said Stephanie Grisham, a spokeswoman for Melania. She feels strongly that they, and their families, should be honored every day, Grisham said. Grisham said Mrs. Trump, who became a U.S. citizen in 2006, also has great admiration for the role the games have played in empowering those who have been injured while serving. Later in the afternoon, 
Mrs. Trump returned to the Sheraton to take part in a reception with Team USA athletes where she made a brief speech that lasted less than two minutes. In the address, she said, and Bidos means unconquered and pays tribute to your fighting spirit. You have given so much for your country. You truly are our heroes. On behalf of my husband and our entire country, I want to thank you and your families for all you have sacrificed to keep us safe. I also want to wish you good luck but I know you won't need it in these games. Take that fighting spirit that I know you have and bring home the gold. God bless you. God bless your families and God bless the United States of America. Following the her remarks, the First Lady shook hands with several athletes, including a seven or eight who approached her and asked for individual photos with their cell phones. Following the his meeting with the First Lady, Prince Harry attended Jaguar Land Rover Driving Challenge where competitors race either Jaguars in a speed and precision course or Land Rovers in an obstacle course. Harry was all smiles as he was sent on a spin in a miniature Land Rovers with little Amy B. Gummer. He then moved on to a meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau, who is also a friend of Meghan Markle. After shaking hands, Harry thanked him and described the reaction to Invitos in Canada as absolutely amazing. There's a real buzz across Toronto, everyone's getting into it, he said. Trudeau also thanked Harry and added that, Sophie and I wish every competitor the best.